Frankly, what I saw at the Royal Opera struck me as musically a five-star performance of a two-star production of a four-star opera That averages out at three and two-thirds stars, but it deserves rounding up to four for the magnificent achievement of Antonio Papano and the Covent Garden Orchestra I had only seen Tchaikovsky's Queen of Spades once before, and was only moderately impressed In both plot and music, I found it less convincing than the same composer's Eugene Onegin, but the energy and commitment shown by Papano brought home the sheer power of the music that I had missed the first time The excellent singing in the new production added to this impression the opera is based on a short story by Pushkin about a young army officer German who falls hopelessly in love with Liza, who unfortunately for him is engaged to his friend Prince Yulevsky Desperate in his quest for Liza, German sees a solution in the unlikely form of her grandmother, the witch-like countess, who clearly does not like him, but holds a secret of three mysterious playing cards that can earn him a fortune He begs the countess to tell him the cards, but she dies, then her ghost returns to tell him the cards He stakes all he has on those cards. And to tell you, what happens would spoil the story The other thing that rather spoils, or at least confuses the story is to bring Tchaikovsky into it, but I shall come to that in a moment First, some praise for the singers and the main roles who were all magnificent The Latvian tenor Alexander Zantanenko has a slightly harsh edge to his voice which was particularly appropriate as he played the role of German becoming more and more obsessed to the point of madness The Dutch soprano Eva Marie Westbrook was stunning as Liza, singing Tchaikovsky's beautiful arias with great power and beauty Impressive as they were, these two were almost outdone in character acting by Felicity Palmer as the Countess, who hobbled around wonderfully as the evil old witch, and Bulgarian baritone Vladimir Stoyanov who brought great depth to the role of Prince Yulevsky, singing his main aria, in which he declares his love for Liza, in a heart-rending manner Interestingly, the role of Prince Yulevsky does not appear in Pushkin's original story and this edition by Tchaikovsky helps explain the decision by director Stefan Herheim to bring the composer into the story and have him played by Stoyanov who is also the prince Herheim's idea, which is introduced by a sort of prologue even before the overture, is that German's destructive love mirrors Tchaikovsky's own life and his struggles trying to suppress his homosexuality So throughout the opera, we see Tchaikovsky on stage, urgently scribbling the story and directing the characters Where this leave Pushkin is anyone's guess, and the constant repetition of Tchaikovsky flapping his arms, as if conducting the music, with the pages of his libretto frequently flying out of control, to create a mess on the floor, suggests that even the director ran out of ideas that involved him Too many opera directors these days try to do something different by introducing a psychosexual interpretation of the story they are telling, but Tchaikovsky had already strayed far enough from Pushkin's story to turn it into an opera The new row production goes too far. But as I said, the orchestra and singing are magnificent Box office, 02073044000.org.uk, in production until February 1. This production will be broadcast on BBC Radio 3 on April 19, 2019.